pole, silly. A fishing pole. Fishing? We're going fishing? Yup, just like my dad and me did. Two best buddies fishing on the way to destiny. tell stories. I bet you didn't know that. I bet there's several things you didn't know about elves. Like, uh, there's only three jobs for an elf. One is making shoes when the old cobbler has fallen asleep. Uh, two is making cookies in an oak tree. It's probably not a good idea to put an oven in an oak tree in the dry season. Things just kind of go up and smoke. <laughs> and uh, three, one is called the show or the big dance. And no, I'm not talking about baseball. They stole that from us. I would say, drum roll, please. And here we go. It is making toys in the workshop, a job only an elf can do. Now, yes, yes, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, he's just too big to be an elf. Well, to prove it to you, I brought some friends along. And we're gonna show you some things. You know, us elves love doing things together, uh, like smiling. Smiling is our favorite thing to do. And then there's dancing. We just love to cut a little rug. And then uh, three is singing. Now, it takes a lot of work to be an elf, a lot of work all the time. And one of the things we work on is the code of the elves. I wonder if there's anyone in here who knows the code of the elves. If you know the code of the elves, why don't you stand up and say it with me? Are you ready? Here we go. Treat every day like Christmas. There's room for everyone on the nice list. All right, nobody knows that one? Okay, I know the choir's behind me. Maybe they can help me say the third one. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is to sing loudly for all to hear. All right, so can we show you some things we've been working on? All right, here we go.
placed it on his head. He began to dance around. Children say he could laugh and play just the same as you and me. Grandma got run over by a reindeer.
I love decorating cookies with people I love. I love singing songs and jingling bells with people I love. I love get, uh, putting ornaments and lots of pretty lights on trees with people I love. I love giving and opening presents with people I love. With people I love. I like being with people I love. Being with people I love is my favorite thing. Everybody in the whole wide world knows that being with people you love is what makes Christmas so uh, special. I wonder if everybody in the whole world, on the whole wide world knows why. Well, I do and I'm gonna tell you because I don't want it to be a secret. Being with people we love is so fun because the very first Christmas in history forever and ever is when God came down from heaven to be with the people he loves. That's right, God loves people, all of them. And even though heaven is the perfect place for him, he left heaven and came down to earth just to be with the people he loves. You and me, that's what Christmas is. <clears throat> I am so just loving everything about Christmas. And this is what it is. God is with us. Merry Christmas.
star of nations by in one the hearts of all men who be the sad divisions see to yourself a king People who once walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in the land of deep darkness and in the shadows of death, on them a light has shone. On us, light. A light, the light, has shone. For unto us a child is born. It's incredible to think that a baby, a baby. This baby. Born in stable in a tiny, insignificant village. Without power, without prestige. Without a social media platform, without connections and followers. No viral videos, no trending hashtags. This baby changed everything. Oh, we talk about the story of Christmas, but don't be confused. This is no once upon a time. This is not a fairy tale. Jesus, the Son of God, given as a gift to us, became a man and lived among us. He flipped our broken, dark world upside down, right side up, inside out. He made the invisible visible, and he pierced the temporary with the eternal. In him is life, and that life is the light of all people. His birth is the ultimate gift, given from the ultimate gift giver that was given to us before creation. It can be yours if you are willing to receive it. The gift, grace, redemption, and adoption the right to become a child of God. A gift for us, the broken, the dark, the lonely, the helpless, the hopeless, the separated. He came for us. And though we live in a dark, dark world, a world at war with God and each other, a world that is evil, ignorant, and unable to do anything about it. He is the light, and he is shining in the darkness. The darkness has not and will not overcome it. This gift is worth the best celebrations we can ever offer. So let's light those trees and sing those carols. Let's surround ourselves with people, with love, and invite others to accept the gift given to us from even before time began. We have seen His glory, glory as the only Son from God the Father. Glory that transforms lives, breaks chains, heals our hearts, makes us new, restores our soul, and secures our eternity. Glory born 
out of God's steadfast, holy love for us. He sees us, He wants us, He saves us. Behold, this is our God. We have waited on Him that He might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for Him. This, this is, is Jesus. Jesus. Let, Let us be glad and rejoice in His salvation. God is with us. Jesus is with us.
Indeed, Jesus is among us and it changes everything. Our response to that is we joyfully praise and bring Jesus to the world and we joyfully be Jesus to the world. I invite you to hear this testimony, hear this declaration, and then sing it with me in just a minute. Here we go. The heavens rang with praise The night that you were born The longing world beheld the Savior come He lived to bring us peace You died to make us free That we would live to show Because he came, because you came, now our hearts will proclaim, let us be joy to the world, let us be peace on the earth, that all would see, come let us adore him. Him. Will you sing this with us? Our everything we give, far as the curse is found, to be a light bright shining in the and guide. Oh, 
good tidings of great joy I have for you and for all the world that on this day to you a Savior is born in the city of Bethlehem. That's a call for joy. Will you stand? Lift your voice with us and let's declare it. Joy. sing it with us. You didn't want heaven without us. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. So what could separate us now? What a wonderful name. and he declared the words, it is finished. That our salvation, our redemption was accomplished for all who would turn to him in faith and repentance. The veil was torn so we can have access to God. Death could not hold you. Yes. The veil tore before you. You silenced the boast of sin and grave. The hell
In this then darkened world, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you will not walk in darkness, but you will have the light of life. He is creator, he is sustainer, and he is reconciler of all things to God by making peace through his shed blood on the cross. Surely he is greater. Surely he is worthy of it all. We invite you in this doxology just to give everything you have to him, your lives, your voices. Give it all to him as we lift our praise. light to everyone and that light y'all it shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it the light you hold in your hands it's a trinket it's a reminder of the light that Jesus gives to all who will receive it this light is battery operated 
but the light that Jesus gives dwells within. And I tell you, when you have that light, the world can see it. It cannot be denied. And did you hear the end of it? It shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. No matter what you go through, if the light of Jesus is in you, the darkness will not, cannot overcome it. That's good news. Jesus is our light and deserves our praise. Will you sing that chorus for me one more time? All the praise, all the thanks, all the glory to your name, all for you, all for you, Jesus, all the praise, all Joy to the world. The Lord has come. I hope that you know that kind of joy. I, I pray that in your home, your home would be filled with joy. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Do you have peace in your life? There's nothing worse than a troubled soul. Things in the past shame, guilt, all the things that rob us of that peace. True peace only comes from God. And the Christmas story tells us how to have peace with God. A silent night, a starry sky, angels, shepherds, wise men, a young virgin girl named Mary, a strong carpenter named Joseph. They're all very important characters in the Christmas story, but don't lose sight of the main event because it's all about Jesus. Without Jesus, nothing else matters. And without Jesus, everything falls apart. But how easy to get distracted. We know some of the things in our head, we've heard the story, but our lives get so distracted. I wonder tonight, has your life been distracted from Jesus? Happens all the time. I've noticed recently with all the American politics and Georgia politics, it's all, it's all the airwaves, and, and it's just all overwhelming at times. You, you can't get away from it. We get distracted. Maybe it's good stuff. Maybe it's college football. Go dogs. I mean, there's a lot to talk about of what's happening in your favorite teams. But you talk about college football more than you talk about Jesus. Maybe your thoughts go further beyond just local things, and you're looking around our world, and you're seeing wars and rumors of wars. You're seeing devastation and images on the news about Ukraine and whatever else it might be, and somehow you get overwhelmed with this sense of where's our world going to? And, and you're, all of a sudden you're distracted. Maybe it's the economy. It's inflation. You're looking at American uh, economics and you're starting to get nervous and afraid. And, and your mind, again, is just overwhelmed with these things. And, and, and all of a sudden you find that you're talking more about that than you are about the Savior. But the hard thing is when it gets real personal, isn't it? 
Maybe tonight your personal finances are in shambles and you're terrified. It's all you can think about. How am I going to make the house payment next month? Maybe it's your child. Maybe your child has become rebellious and, and, and your heart breaks and you're consumed with trying to figure out what can I do to reach my child. Maybe you have a loved one. There's so many today who are caught up in drugs and addictions and their life is being wasted away. And, and, and again, you're, you're consumed with, how can I fix this? What can I do? Maybe it's your marriage. M maybe there's uh, the loss of a loved one and you're overwhelmed with grief and sorrow. Maybe you're just in a dark place. You don't even know why. You just find yourself in this dark place and life seems so empty and meaningless and you're wondering, why in the world am I here? And you're trying to do your best to be a good person and do the right thing, but you're overwhelmed with this burden in your life. You ever been there? I get it. We get it. Every person in this room deals with and struggles with the real issues of life. There's times it's overwhelming. It's all-consuming. And there's even times when it's literally life-threatening. You know, the Scripture says to trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And yet we try to figure things out in our own understanding. We leave God out. We're distracted away from the main thing. Listen, without Jesus, nothing else matters. Without Jesus, everything seems to fall apart is why God sent Jesus to you. This is, the, this is really the heart of what the Christmas story is. That, that God created you for an everlasting love relationship with Him. And when He created you, He created you very unique, uh, different than any other living being on this earth. He created you in His own image, which means He put a soul inside of you. He made you spiritual by nature. And, and though your physical body will someday uh, die, your spirit will live on forever. And he intended that you would live forever with him. But if you don't know him, your spirit will live on, but apart from him. But God still loves you. Aren't you glad? You see, the Bible says that sin entered the world, that through Adam, sin came into the world, and from that point on, all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. But God still loved us. He found a way. He sent Jesus to come to this earth and take our place to die for our sin so that we would not have to die eternally but live with him forever. And the Bible says that all who would believe on Jesus, repent of their sin, and choose to follow him as Lord of their life, they would have abundant life now and eternal life forever with him in that beautiful place called heaven. That's good news, isn't it? Well, this last section of our program tonight is very powerful. We're going to tell you the story, the, the gospel story, the Christmas story. And, and as we tell that story through music and through dance and through scripture, I want you to listen very carefully because God is here. And that God who loves you wants you to know him. And at the end of our time together, I want you to go back to your phone and get that number that you texted earlier. And, and as God begins to move in your life and there's things that are raised up and maybe I've hit some issues that you're very well aware of and you're struggling in your own life and you just want some prayer. Well, that number that you texted earlier, if you would just text that again and, ask, and just put the word prayer, we'll respond and we'll begin to pray specifically for you, whatever that might be. We've been praying for a lot of people over the last couple of days. Maybe God is working in your life at the end of this time. You realize, I've heard about God, but I want to know God. Would you text that word believe? If you want to put your trust and faith in Jesus Christ, text the word believe and we'll respond and we'll talk with you. Can, can I say that already in the performances that we have had, we've had some who for the very first time believed and gave their life to Christ. We're so grateful. 
But uh, it, maybe there's some other things. You wanna, if you want to put the word connect, you can figure out how to get involved in this church and what's happening. Several have said, how can I join that choir? Well, let me tell you how. You, you, we, we want more people to use their gifts and talents for God. And so you may want to put connect, and we'll talk to you about how you can get involved here. Uh, but if you also just want to talk to a pastor, if you text just the word pastor, we'll get a hold of you. We'll talk with you, just one-on-one. Whatever's on your heart, we'll, we'll process it with you and let you know what God is doing and how to respond to him. But these next few moments are going to be really important. I'm going to pray, and then you're going to experience the gospel story through song. And I pray that by the end of this time that you would be drawn closer to him, that you would know joy and peace deep in your life. Heavenly Father, I pray that as we continue in this next section of our presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that your presence would fill this place. That each one who is here or is going to be watching online, that they would hear clearly and understand, perhaps for the first time, what it means to be at peace with you. Why it is that we need Jesus. And I pray that by the time we leave, we would truly worship him in spirit and in truth. Do what only you can do. Speak into our lives. And we ask this in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This is the symphony of Christmas. Since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, sin has separated all of us from the holiness of God. For centuries, the payment for the penalty of sin was through a blood sacrifice. Countless innocent lambs were slain in an attempt to obtain righteousness before God. However, our Heavenly Father had a master plan. He chose to send His one and only Son, Jesus, to give His life as the final payment for all sin. And so, After 400 years of silence between God and His people, He sent a messenger to a chosen one, a virgin girl named Mary. Greetings, O favored one, the Lord God is with you. not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. Hail. 
you will be with child, and you will give birth to a son, and you shall give this child the name of Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. the angel's words, but her betrothed husband, Joseph, was troubled by the news. He made plans to quietly end his engagement to Mary. But an angel appeared to him in a dream, saying, Fear not, for that which is conceived in Mary is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And it came to pass that a decree went out that the whole Roman Empire should be registered. Joseph took Mary and began the wearisome journey to the town of his ancestors, Bethlehem. found a town overwhelmed with people, and they could find no place to stay. Mary knew the time to deliver the baby was near, so Joseph pleaded with an innkeeper, who offered them shelter in his stable. There, in the presence of lowly cattle and sheep, Mary gave birth to Jesus, the King of Heaven, who could have come in regal robes on a mighty horse surrounded by angelic armies, chose to come softly sweetly as a newborn baby lying in a manger. A quiet stillness blanketed the town. The streets were empty. The marketplace sat dormant. And on the outskirts of town, shepherds kept a sleepy but watchful eye on their flocks. A gentle breeze drifted through the fields underneath a velvet sky. As time almost seemed to stand still. Suddenly, the calm was broken by an immense light as an angel of the Lord burst forth from the heavens with a proclamation. Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring good news of great joy, which shall be for all the world. Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born, a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now you must go and find him. Look for a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. 
All at once, the skies were consumed by a massive choir of angels as their voices rang out in triumphant praise. The shepherds did as the angel told them, and they found the Christ child lying in a manger. They shared the news with all who would hear, and they came to worship. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. To those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, new light has dawned. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and of his kingdom there shall be no end.
star rose over the place where Jesus was born. It led three wise men from the east to come and worship him.
frankincense for the Lord above all lords. Myrrh for the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. Gold for the king above all kings.